Well, stability needs to be defined first because I think there, you know, it could be confused perhaps depending on, you know, who is listening or who is trying to implicate what stability should be or needs to be. So when I think of the word stability, broken down, stable, lack of movement is what we're talking about, right? Or a resistance to change and shape. So it's like, we need to learn how to be stable in specific situations and we need to learn how to not be stable in specific situations. Stability isn't the end all be all quality, right? We, we just know that it's something that's important during specific situations in sport. So when I, when I, when I know I'm going to accept contact, I know I need to be stable. When I, when I accept contact, randomly and I don't know that it's coming I need to be able to be stable when I land or when I put my foot down to, to brace or whatever it is so I think it's like distinctful to understand it's, it's a distinguishing when I want to be stable and when I don't want to be stable for instance when I'm sprinting it's not really a need to be stable because there, it, it, there's velocity and I need and I want to be fast. So it's hard to be stable and fast at the same same time. Right. But when I want to jump off of one foot or when I or when I want to cut or when I want a euro, those impacts or collisions on the floor with my feet require a co-contraction and stability in order for the system to stay rigid so that energy doesn't leak and I and my cut is less effective or um, maybe I have a joint that's a little loose and now bad things can shift and happen. Um, so that, that's another moment when I wanna be stable. At those large collision impact type moments when I'm trying to maneuver, get away or explode. So, Defining those moments is very important when you define stability. And the way we work on it is, A, get out of the shoes, allow the foot to start to build strength so that when, and not only strength, but also separation. Because when you're in a shoe, your foot is very, very tight, which means force isn't able to disperse throughout the tissue. Whereas if you open your foot up, now force can distribute throughout the tissue and now it travels up the chain, imagine this is my leg, a lot more efficiently. So we get our athletes out, out of their shoes, we allow them to feel the floor of what their, uh, what their foot is supposed to experience during single leg contact, during single leg stabilization. And then we just do a bunch of single leg drills, um, unstable training on an Eric's pad, on a WAF, on a BOSU ball, I think those th there's value there. Um, we're not doing everything on unstable training, but we are, you know, there's value in creating perturbation in the ankle and foot. So the brain has, has feedback on how to stabilize on an unstable surface. Also on flat flo floor, um, maybe putting a band underneath the big toe so that the big toe can learn how to, how to create tension. So the foot becomes rigid. Um, and just continuously throwing balance challenges at athletes, but allowing them to own success and own position. Because if you challenge an athlete on a single leg and they're just consistently just hopping around, what is that really training? The brain is, is such a huge component of stability that we need to experience success in order for it to stick. So making sure our athletes are experiencing success, balance aids, single leg option the the back leg is balance aided you know there are multiple ways to manipulate the environment so that you can create success and once the athlete's successful then you remove balance aid and once the athlete's successful with that then you add load and once the athlete's successful with that then you add dynamic stability so there is a paradigm and there is a progression but again the main point is get out of the shoes spend some time on a single leg on unstable and stable surface and then progress from there.